Hello and welcome to a new video today we're going to take a look at all those roles the base roles and whether you should upgrade them or not. I'm not going to upgrade them based on how cool a specific advanced role is but rather on a few other things that are very important because I did a little research and these things actually do matter a lot more than you might think. First of all we're going to talk about strength which is a measurement of how much stronger or even weaker are the advanced roles compared to the base role. Then we also are going to take a look at fun, which is probably the most important thing for you. And also at frequency, because if you upgrade a role that barely appears in any setup, what's really the point of upgrading this, right? I'm not assuming talismans, meaning that I'm just looking at how often do roles typically appear in your sandbox or quick game setups. And of course, crazy game modes, ranked and custom games do not count towards this experiment. We're gonna start with the bottom. Normally I would just pick one role, but I'm going to instead work up from the tiers. We're gonna start with the Headhunter. This is the worst role to upgrade because you're guaranteed at the moment at least because maybe in the future we have an anarchist who knows but at the moment you're guaranteed to get the fool and the fool i mean this the fool is a really fun role but the fool really lets down in strength of course the fool and the headhunter do not really have abilities but that's why i looked at win rate or chance to win with these roles and clearly the headhunter has a way better chance of winning than the fool because you can turn into a villager and it actually scored a negative score it's just not worth to upgrade the headhunter even though it is pretty frequent you will find it quite often the other roles that have a negative score are the loudmouth and the shadow wolf the loudmouth actually it really is painful to me because my favorite role is still the Avenger and the Avenger is an advanced role of the Loudmouth. But the Loudmouth would not have scored this low if it wasn't for, well, the Fortune Teller. The Fortune Teller is really dragging this family down. But I graded all the roles based on those strength, fun and frequency. And frequency is just for the family as a whole. So the Loudmouth scored a two on that out of five. Like, I didn't give a single one actually, so it's all 2, 3, 4 and 5. Uh, the Bellringer and the Avenger are better than the Loudmouth, but yeah, if you do have the Fortune Teller already, I would say the Loudmouth is probably going to be a mid-tier role, but otherwise it's definitely a waste of cards. It's a huge gamble and you don't want to get Fortune Teller. Shadow Wolf is not worth the upgrade either since the addition of the toxic wolf but even with the without the toxic wolf it still would not really be the best thing to upgrade it's somewhat frequent you will see it so now and then but really in my opinion it's same as the berserk in terms of both strength and fun you may disagree there because i, I see a lot of berserk fans but actually i would not say this is this should be your priority upgrade at all the toxic wolf is definitely a worse role in my opinion than the shadow wolf Let's start for example with the Jailer, and that might surprise you because the Warden is such a cool role, right? But actually the Jailer is a really cool role too, so some people will like the Warden more than the Jailer. But in terms of strength and fun, I think they're like similar level. And from my experience, and I can tell you I have quite the experience with both roles, especially with the Jailer. But I do have all the roles by the way, so I do have the context of knowing how much fun or as, how strong roles are. The Jailer is not really worse than the Warden. As Jailer you have more control for example in the jail cell. Of course it looks less influential but actually it probably isn't. Especially in end games I would say the Jailer is way stronger than the Warden. So yeah the Jailer definitely not worth your upgrade because the Jailer is already a very good role. Then we have the Seer as well on this tier. The Seer is, oh oops, you have to grab the Seer. The Seer is here because it's kind of similar to Analyst. Not the biggest fan of playing with these roles, but yeah, it's it's okay. Uh, Strength-wise, I would say Analyst might be sometimes better, but sometimes Seer is better. So, not much to say here. Detective, actually same story with the Mortician. Exactly the same thing. Sheriff is a little bit different. Sheriff and Theo actually have a little contrast. The Sheriff is namely, in my opinion, more fun because you actually get to do something and it feels more satisfying when you get the info because you have to predict who dies. 
but the VO is more consistent and the info is actually quite good as well as long as you don't compare against a solo roll clearly in terms of fun I would go for the sheriff so not worth the upgrade really unless you uh, really don't like to gamble and you really just want a stronger roll then I guess you could take the VO but even then the roll is not the most frequent one you will find. We are not quite done on the waste of cards here though because the arsonist is actually here as well because of the siren pretty much but to be fair the bomber is not that much better either it's kind of it's kind of a personal preference I would say but the arsonist people don't like the arsonist that much but it's actually better than most of these other roles in my opinion I would say only guaranteed better role than the arsonist is the alchemist opinions will differ here of course but regardless arsonist is not going to be a very good upgrade then the bandit is the final role for the waste of cards because in terms of strength this might actually be the strongest rk it's difficult to say because the zombies are also a thing and also in the bandit tree in terms of fun i would say they're like similar this is the waste of cards here as you can see uh, do not upgrade these rolls really unless you have nothing else but <laughs> preferably just wait for any other card actually i found something <laughs> out now on my list i should move the five rolls from jailer onwards to the tier above it three days later all right now we are back and we are still being in the not great tier now but now the rolls that are a little bit better they're usually not the most frequent ones or the advanced rolls barely etch out the base roll these are three of the rolls only so it's not that many starting with the guardian wolf the guardian wolf not the most frequent one typically it's a pretty rare role i have to say and yeah wolf pacifist in my opinion is just a downgrade jelly wolf is a slight upgrade jelly wolf is it's, it's like a gamble if you get jelly wolf it's good if you will get wolf pacifist you can consider this a waste of cards as well so that's why it's here it's not great but yeah let's go to the next one which is the mayor and this might also surprise you because there's a lot of fan favorites in the mayor tree slash people also don't like the mayor itself but actually I would say it's it's not a bad role uh, and it's foremost a very rare role this is one of the rarer roles for sure in the game what I found is that the mayor is the third best role in this tree the baker is in my opinion a downgrade because you have less influence on the votes yourself and it's only preferable over the mayor when it comes to Wolfluencer games specifically otherwise the mayor is probably just better regardless it's still an upgrade especially because the grumpy grandma is a much better role in my opinion than the mayor it's a lot more fun and probably a lot stronger too because you can actually mute people although muting can also have its downsides clearly if you mute someone who is actually needed to speak for example to claim a role or actually to even share info if you accidentally mute the seer or so and then we have the preacher which is a little bit controversial for me that's a better role than a mayor especially fun wise though maybe not strength wise it's difficult to get like a lot of good guesses but yeah preacher is like similar to the mayor so it's a it's a small upgrade you will probably get it's still a little bit of a gamble and it's a rare role now that we have done the mayor let's go to the nightmare werewolf which is the final werewolf for this tier if you upgrade the nightmare werewolf you have a chance to get a worse role which is in my opinion the storm wolf a lot of people actually like the storm wolf but i think it's not that good actually like if you are somewhat competent you can easily play around the storm wolf and usually the hidden votes are not going to do that much either although the storm wolf does have its advantages too and even against good players the, the storm wolf will still take quite a couple seconds for the good players the voodoo on the other hand is definitely an upgrade for me although you could actually argue it's not that much stronger because a nightmare is probably better than a mute so yeah that's also something to discuss in another video i guess let's move to the mid tier we're starting this off with the wolf seer that is because the wolf seer is very actually very close in all aspects to the blind werewolf and the sorcerer so people argue sorcerer is a lot stronger but i would say in sandbox and quick game 
when you see a sorcerer in game you are going to just not trust any duplicate informers basically or even RV informers so it's not that strong really in ranked it would be a lot stronger for sure but yeah since we are talking about roll cards ranked is not in the question blind werewolf is also a pretty good role obviously these three roles are pretty close to each other in terms of fun and strength but what is guaranteed with the wolf seer is that it will appear very often in fact this is one of the roles that got a 5 on frequency which is a 5 out of 5 on frequency if it gets a 5 out of 5 that actually means it like always appears in your setup so it's Definitely a good thing about the Wolf Seer is if you upgrade it, you are going to get to play with your advanced role. So if you want just some variety, then Wolf Seer is definitely something you can uh, consider in the higher tier as well. Let's go to the next one in this tier, which is the Bodyguard. The bodyguard might be a little bit controversial what I have to say about it here. So what I found with the Bodyguard is that the Sea Apprentice is, for me at least, in terms of fun and strength, on the same level as the Bodyguard. It's just very different, uh, but as Sea Apprentice you are very reliant on other people to die and as Bodyguard you are a protector clearly and a lot of people don't like to be a protector but I think there is some fun to be had with being Bodyguard. You can actually bait the werewolves into thinking you are a doctor but then we have the tough guy which is a clear favorite here. It's the upgrade of the Bodyguard. So I would say this role it does appear semi-frequently with a frequency rating of 3 out of five but yeah it's like a gamble you either get to see apprentice which is just very different but not very much different in terms of fun and strength or you get the tough guy which is an upgrade next up we have the red lady this might be actually very controversial too because the ghost lady is a very beloved role in the community but i found the red lady it is actually definitely worth to upgrade it to the ghost lady don't get me wrong but the Red Lady is one of the rarer roles in the game. So you will hardly get to play with the Ghost Lady actually. It's one of the frequency 2 roles. Meaning it's like not really that frequent. You will see it maybe a little bit more than the Loudmouth. But definitely not as much as something like a Bodyguard. So Red Lady uh, mid tier because of frequency foremost. But yeah the Ghost Lady is in both in terms of strength and fun in my opinion. But it's better but not extremely much better. And it's just not really that frequent so mid tier and we're going to the cupid which is another very controversial one because a lot of fan favorite roles are going down here the cupid has the instigator as only role so if you upgrade the cupid you're guaranteed to get the instigator uh, upgrading to instigator is actually upgrading to get more fun out of this role because in strength it's really it's it's hard to compare because they have different win conditions to some extent the instigator has like better tools to win with its team however the cupid like the headhunter gets the chance to win with the village which actually will increase your win rate most likely so i would say in terms of strength i cannot really say that one is stronger than the other it's somewhat frequent because most games do appear with either a cursed or a cupid so it's a frequency of four and yeah that puts it at the mid tier here it's better than Red Lady, than Bodyguard, than Wolfseer, but it's not the best upgrade. And you will probably find a lot of relatively boring, not shiny rolls, but they're all very good upgrades that we will see in the top, by the way. So don't worry, I will explain why they will be there. Then we're going to the Fool next. The Fool is also here. We had the Headhunter before. You will probably get less fun out of upgrading it to the headhunter but you will get more wins so the strength is going to be a lot better as well as that the fool is more often fixed in the setup than the headhunter you often see the random voting rule as a category and then it's like 50 50 of course but if it's not the random voting category you usually find yourself a fool fix so it's a little bit more frequent than the headhunter perhaps we are not done on this tier though because next we have the junior werewolf and this might be another fan favorite on this tier here the mid tier it's it, it feels a bit strange to place it here but really it does all make sense why it is here in terms of strength it's like the weaker part of this family clearly i had the wolfluencer same strength because the wolfluencer is hard to compare it's kind of different in ability, but yeah, Wolfmancer is only strong in the end game. The Chitin Werewolf can make an impact very quickly. However, the Kitten Wolf is a bit stronger than the Junior Werewolf because you can actually convert someone 
and the split wolf is definitely stronger than the junior werewolf because it's junior werewolf plus more but in terms of fun the junior werewolf is in the middle kitty wolf is less fun because instead of like tagging someone and taking them down with you you actually need your teammates to do the work which might be a little bit more boring that's why the kitten wolf scores a low here however the wolf lancer same type of fun but yeah split wolf is definitely the most fun of these in my opinion so yeah the split wolf is definitely the best thing you can get with the junior werewolf this, the wolf lancer and the kitten wolf have like are balanced out with the junior werewolf they just offer something different especially the wolf lancer well and let's go to the final role that is on this tier which is the wolf shaman the wolf shaman is here because the wolf shaman is a pretty weak role especially if you compare it to the confusion werewolf which is a very 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 strong role if you compare it to the wolf shaman and also i would say the trickster is maybe a little bit stronger as well but that doesn't really have such a big difference. I mean, it's easier to get your ability used as Trickster, but most people will not actually fall for a Wolf Trickster going down. In terms of fun though, the Wolf Shaman scores like the same score for me as the Wolf Trickster in terms of fun. It's more satisfying to see uh, someone enchanted going down than getting to see the Wolf Trickster player going down. But yeah, on the other hand, it's more likely you will see the Wolf Trickster in action than the Wolf Shaman in action. And then we have the Confusion Werewolf, which is more fun. It's definitely gonna be easier to use your ability there and still very satisfying. So the Confusion Werewolf is an upgrade to the Wolf Shaman and the Trickster is around the same, a little bit better perhaps. And in terms of frequency, it is actually probably the rarest werewolf they will find so that's drags it down a lot these are roles that you can upgrade for sure and i would say it's justified to upgrade these roles though there are going to be better roles clearly because we also have the elite upgrades tier but let's go to the solid choices starting off with the vigilante the vigilante is here because it is common and the bully and the gunner are more fun foremost in terms of strength uh, they're all the same in my opinion potentially the gunner is stronger in terms of fun the vigilante is definitely underwhelming if you compare it to the bully and the gunner so that's why it belongs to solid choices also because this role has a frequency of five meaning it's one of the most frequent roles definitely something you will get to play with if you upgrade it so i would say this is worth upgrading vigilante yes then we are going to move to the medium also another very common role uh, here we have the conjurer of course which is a fan favorite role and that's also why it actually ends right here but the conjurer has a downside and that is the strength value it's the worst role in terms of strength in the medium family the ritualist and the medium are stronger because you actually get to revive a player and a player means uh, extra brains and also an extra vote so that is why the conjurer is the weakest role but definitely the most fun role for most people in this role tree then the next one is going to be surprising like you might expect this to be lower but it's the flower child this is one of the roles that might be a little bit boring but it actually is very simple you're guaranteed to get the pacifist the pacifist is a lot stronger than the flower child and also I would say more fun a little bit more fun so it's just it's very rare which is why it's not an elite upgrade even though the pacifist may not look as shiny maybe as something like I don't know a warden still the pacifist is a better role than the flower child flower child is one of the least popular roles in the whole community I believe so yeah of course I am not someone who likes the pacifist but that's more of a balance issue than a fun or strength issue if you upgrade a role then you're not gonna care about game balance right like that's not why you upgrade roles all right let's move to the priest you're getting the judge or the marksman stronger and more fun in my opinion especially the marksman is a good upgrade it's not the most common but it's also not the rarest thing uh, it's a frequency of three and the priest is clearly the least fun role of this tree and also the weakest in my opinion the only advantage it has is that it can kill quite quickly but other than that the marksman and the judge definitely outperform the priest so the priest is a solid choice then we're going to the witch the witch is another role very similar of course we all know what the witch has the witch has the astronomer and the forger 
and those are roles that are a lot more fun and especially stronger. And the witch has the same rarity, a frequency of three, and of course it's the least fun and also the weakest of the three. And it's not like much weaker per se, there's arguments that which can be stronger than an Astronomer, for example. I would say most times Astronomer is going to be stronger. We are moving to the Alpha Werewolf, which is another clear one. I don't have to tell much here. It's not the most common thing, which is why it's not an elite upgrade. But yeah, the Stomach Werewolf and the Wolf Summoner, especially the Stomach Werewolf though, uh, definitely an upgrade to the Alpha Werewolf. There is no point in not upgrading the Alpha Werewolf. The Alpha Werewolf has only like a double vote and private messaging a day. The Stubborn Werewolf and the Wolf Summoner are just interesting roles with abilities which the Alpha Werewolf doesn't quite have. And there's two more roles that we have on this tier here before we go to the Elite Cup upgrades. And we are going first at the Cursed, which has a frequency of 4. And you actually upgrade it to the Werewolf Fan or the Grave Robber. If you are someone who wants a fun role, a genuinely fun role, then this is Probably the role you should be upgrading to be fair, but yeah in general I would say in terms of strength it doesn't really matter that much same thing with the cupid by the way in terms of frequency a frequency of four Let's move to the final role, which is another not interesting role to be fair But it is just a very clear upgrade in terms of strength and that's why it's here the corruptor you upgrade to the illusionist and the illusionist is just a corruptor but quicker and that's the mere reason why it's a solid choice because you are guaranteed to get more strength with your role and hence maybe a little bit more fun as well and yeah it's pretty common too uh, i would say that if you look at the four killers then the corruptor and the arsonist are the most common ones like these have the most interesting abilities uh, bandit and serial killer appear a little bit less because serial killer is kind of weak and Bandit has some balance issues sometimes. They are just hard to work with. We are starting this with the Beast Hunter. The number four of this list, the Beast Hunter. The Beast Hunter is here because the Flagger, the Trapper is just a stronger Beast Hunter and the Flagger is a lot more fun than the Beast Hunter. And this is also not a very rare role either. In terms of strength, I would say the Flagger is more flexible. With some good game reading, you will be able to have the same type of strength as well as a Beast Hunter. So if you're not a really good player, then the Beast Hunter might be stronger because you are guaranteed to actually kill Werewolf and not accidentally kill a Villager. And in terms of fun, I would definitely say the Flagger is so much more fun than a Beast Hunter. And also the Trapper is more fun than the Beast Hunter, foremost because it's stronger. You're less of a scapegoat as Trapper. Although I, if you play with me in the game, I'm still gonna use you as scapegoat, <laughs> as if you're Trapper. So yeah, watch out, I guess. Now we're going to the number three of this list, Doctor. It is somewhat frequent with frequency of four, meaning you will get to play with Doctor and Doctor Advanced roles so now and then. And in terms of fun, I would say it's it's worse than the Butcher and the Night Watchman, but especially in terms of strength, it's so much worse than the Butcher. And it's also worse than the Night Watchman, especially if you are playing with people who actually claim something as uh, werewolf, like protective roles, then you can just counter them with the Night Watchman. So it's an easy upgrade. This is worth your cards. Upgrading Doctor to Butcher, but also to the Night Watchman, and all are gonna be good. Then we're going to do a number two of this list, which is actually the serial killer. The serial killer is here because it's not the most common one, but it's such a big upgrade you will get, regardless of which role you get. The cannibal is clearly the best role in this tree, because you can save up kills, and unlike the arsonist, you can actually like decide to kill who later. But yeah, it's, it's stronger, it's just a better serial killer, and a lot more fun as well than the serial killer. Also, the evil detective is also just a serial killer, but stronger because you get the option to play a serial killer by killing someone and yourself, meaning that the other player just dies because they're always gonna be on the other team. But you also get the option to go for double kills if you wish to do so. And let's go to the final one, the Aura Seer. This is the role to upgrade, it may surprise you or not, but the Aura Seer is one of the most common roles again, frequency of 5, you see uh, Aura Seer pretty much in all your games or an advanced role of this. 
and the Spirit Seer and the Gambler are infinitely stronger. They are just so much better and more fun than the Aura Seer. This is the number one role to upgrade the Aura Seer. It may seem strange because, I mean, the Gambler and the Spirit Seer are not the first roles to pop in your mind, perhaps, when you're thinking of getting a cool advanced role, but it's just, this makes so much sense to upgrade. You're getting a guaranteed upgrade to the Aura Seer. It's gonna be a lot stronger, it's gonna be a lot more fun, and you're gonna get to play with it as well. And this is the example of upgrading a shit house to a very decent house. Rather than upgrading a car to a very luxurious car, which you don't really would need. You don't have to take my word for everything if you don't want to. But if you were looking for some advice on which roles to upgrade, then here you have the results based on my little research based on frequency, strength and fun. They all matter in my opinion. Frequency is more important than you may think. Also keep in mind these are based off the fact that you own no role in the family yet. Because of course if you already own the fortune teller then the loudmouth may be like a mid tier or a not great tier. I would advise you against upgrading to the legendary or mythical tier because getting to play with all these roles is something that really keeps me interested in the game and I can only imagine that also works the same for you. If you get to play with so many different roles, even if it's not the most fun role, you just get to play with it so now and then it just really keeps the game fresh. So I recommend always upgrading your roles, get as many roles as possible and then upgrade it to legendary and mythical later on I guess. I will see you later, let me know what you thought of this and also tell me in the comments which roles you own, bye bye. If you loved what you just saw then make sure to check out this juicy video I have here for you. You can also subscribe and turn on epic notifications to never miss a future upload. My social links including discord server are in the link tree, link is in the description. I will see you later and don't be a traitor.